welcome to the reality revolution today i have an older channeling and it sort of falls within the umbrella of quo because hatan is a portion of it although there is another entity that is channeled in this that i had not heard before called ira son of mishtad and they ask a question about the 144000 that are mentioned in the bible and we've talked about this concept in a Neville Goddard episode, which he said it's just a numeric value for all of man. But I was interested in hearing what Quo had to say about it. Quo is a group of higher density beings channeled through LL research that includes Hatan, Latwi, and Ra. And in the older channelings, they would channel some of these social memory complexes separately, and they were under that umbrella. And it's a short channeling, but I found it to be interesting to help our understanding of it. Now, the IRA that they're channeling claims to have been someone that knew Jesus in his lifetime and is not a social memory complex, but an actual ascended master, which is very rare in these channelings. So I found it to be interesting, and we'll go over what he has to say. This is delivered on November 13th, 1988. This concerns the concept of the chosen or the elect mentioned in the Bible by Jesus when he said that the elect would see the kingdom of heaven mentioned by the Jehovah Witnesses when they talk about the 144,000 and in the new age when the chosen people are mentioned as those that are going to be lifted off the planet by the UFOs when they land. So we're looking for comments upon the elect, the chosen. Is this a valid concept or is this a distortion of something else? Carla begins channeling. I am Ira, son of Mishdat. I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. We must identify ourselves to you who are servants of love and light, for we have been some time so identifying ourselves to this instrument. We've had no trouble passing this instrument's challenge, but this instrument was displeased that we were not members of the Confederation, but rather what you might call an ascended master. The significant incarnation for this humble one of Jerusalem was that of Ira, son of Mishdad, for it was in that lifetime that I followed Yehoshua, as he was called in his own dialect. You call this teacher Jesus. I was not worthy to touch his clothing, and yet it was my joy to follow Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Because there has been much distortion concerning the import and intent of the sayings attributed to your Jesus, we find that in certain sensitive channels we are able to create a subtle channel. The method of impression is quite different from that which this instrument is used to, and we feel the instrument coping and suggest the instrument not cope, but rather simply realize that the pace of speaking may be as brisk as possible, for we have no need to regulate speech as we are using a somewhat different form of concept communication. In the spirit of love and in the spirit of Christ, let us pause to praise and thank the Father of all and to worship at the feet of the One Father. Much is misunderstood that my teacher said, and I am most happy to share what in my own opinion was that given about what this instrument calls the elect. This is a grievous distortion of the true intent of Jesus, saying, where to begin? Along many dusty roads I walked, trying to catch a word or two of his private conversations. And when he spoke, he spoke quietly, yet clearly, with much pride and authority, although he was always begrimed and dusty from the road. Somehow, we all looked up to him without knowing why, even before we had heard what he had to say. I believe that the true importance of the idea of the elect is already clear to each who has become aware of the concept of service to others and service to self. The numbers of the elect are not exact, but symbolical in intention, it was the way of the rabbis to use numbers symbolically. The number 12 meant completion. 12 times 12 meant a completion of completions. All eventually, which has become self-conscious, shall be of the elect, shall be of service to others or service to self, shall choose their seed by the seed planted in good soil. However, at the end of a given period of experience, some shall be ready for the next step and some not. I believe that Jesus' intent was to prepare humankind to meet the challenges of infinity and the larger life that lies beyond these earthly vessels we call bodies. 
The concept of elitism or choosing one person above another would have been inherently distasteful to my teacher. Yet my teacher knew that one can offer information but yet cannot expect that information to flower in every heart that it receives it. It is certainly so in my own mind that my Savior felt himself to be the least and lowest of any man. Indeed, the servant of all. This compassion would never be stinted by such an idea as a true elite in which some children of the Father were invited into the mansion and others not. This is not so. And this is not true. This was not the intention of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The road of my Savior was a road that asked all people to seek for something called the kingdom of heaven. Each who hears my voice may choose himself to be the elect by choosing to live a certain kind of life, by choosing to attempt to be of service in the spiritual sense, by intention, in as much of the experience as possible. These are those things, this manifestation of love, this thinking about love by which each of you creates the condition of the chosen. It is you who choose yourself. You have not my experience in walking in Galilee with the Master. You have not my personal experiences, and I realize, because you did not experience these things, they will never be real to you, as they are to me. Yet I say to you, as honestly as I know how, through this instrument, that there was no intention in the one known to you as Jesus, but to me as Rabbi or Yeheshua. This entity precluded, excluded no one, but took all potentially within the heart Yet never, never would the master presume, always was he patient, except with those who did not tell the truth. I ask you now, you who have not walked with Jesus, to listen and pay attention to his true message, and to shut out of your ears and refuse to listen to the self-important bragging of those who depend upon anything but faith and call themselves chosen or elect. Yes, there shall indeed be the elect, and you shall indeed elect yourselves, that which is within your holy Bible is a pitifully poor account in terms of volume of what the rabbi had to say, of the impact that he had on people personally, of the transformation we all felt when we were in his presence, of the astounding miracles that he did. The master was a free person. He relied completely on the moment and he listened within. This voice through which we are speaking we call a human channel, for that which he spoke was not his. That which he received from the Father, although he often made the joke and the pun upon his own accord, being a somewhat humorous person by nature. And as we leave this instrument, we suggest that each may find it valuable to study the path that my Lord and Savior took, to think about the words of the rabbi, to evaluate them, and to grasp the truth within this life story. For through lifetimes of unbroken desire to seek the Father in the way my Lord and Savior taught, I have been able to achieve that state which is between the third and fourth of your densities, as you call them, that state in which I am in whatever position I wish, doing whatever service I wish. It is rare that we are able to speak consciously to an instrument such as this. Normally we speak in visions and dreams. We are honored at this rare opportunity, for we are not wise. We are still awaiting the beginning of what you shall call social memory complex. We are still those of us who have harvested ourselves by the grace of God, doing the work with those who would wish to be chosen and the elect by their own choice, by their own election. We are happy to speak with this instrument at any time. Whenever there is a call for this sort of information, we do find that in working with this instrument, we shall come under certain restrictions upon information. For that, you will have to forgive us. But we find, as this instrument is giving us validation, she is very far from full consciousness but we are able to communicate with her well. We must pause. We are losing contact with this instrument. Carla says, I lost it. I'm sorry. It was real faint, but it was very clear. Very interesting. Thank you, Ira, son of Mishdad. I've still got some pressure there. And then Carla channels again. I am Ira, son of Mishdad. I greet you in the name of Jesus Christ. We are sorry for the breakup and this communication will be breaking up as this is very tiring to the instrument we find. This instrument has an unusual access to its subconscious. We wish to offer one more concept before we leave. If we are able to get it through this instrument quickly enough, and that is that there was a question about the name, the importance of the name. We find in this instrument's song, the hymn, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. 
Blessed be the name of the Lord. We find many such phrases in this instrument's worship. The naming is that which is the nature. When a person chooses a different nature and becomes passionately bonded to that nature in such a way that it will change the life and seals the change by a name, that is a name of power, because that is a person of power. When a person chooses a symbol for perfect compassion and divine love, for what this instrument calls the highest and best of all things, the seeker must name the symbol. If the seeker's faith is in itself, it will name itself. If the seeker's psychological makeup is such that it is aware of its many errors and wishes to lean upon an idealized portion of itself, it may call upon the name of Jesus. For it is in that consciousness and in that consciousness only that you may be called elect, that you may be chosen to be chosen. You must become your journey and your journey must become you. And the name of the consciousness that is your journey is Christ. You may choose your Christ, but is it in the name that the power lies? For the name is the nature, and the nature, the name, and the I am of consciousness is symbolized in its idealized form. By my teacher, Jesus, I leave you in that blessed name. We are thankful we are able to conclude this communication, for it would be very bad manners for us to leave you without blessing you, urging you to good works, to loving God in Christ, and loving each other as yourselves. So our teacher has taught us, those of us who have stayed behind to aid each of you to make the great choice. Your little life is not long, and you shall be called to account if you have not chosen. And we speak to those who may only read those words which we speak, choose now. Choose that symbol for which you would die. Choose that faith that is the I am for you. Choose your consciousness. Choose to be a certain way. Choose to be chosen. If my teacher is not yours, I leave you in peace and bid you quickly get hence and write quickly. Seek and find your true symbol, but let that symbol be the Christ to you. And may you seek to be the servant of all, for it is truly is in serving that you shall grow, that you shall become strong, and that you shall be healed of all bitterness, sadness, and grief. We offer you the blessing of Jesus Christ. Go forth in peace, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Know that Spirit is within you always. Amen, amen, amen. I am Ira, son of Mishdad. Amen. Carla. Are you getting anything, Mickey? I'm not. No. Let's just meditate for a minute. Carla channeling. I am Hatan. I greet you in the love and in the light of the infinite creator. It is indeed a privilege to speak through this instrument and to this group, and we shall not long abide. We merely wish to acknowledge to you, the one known as C, that we were with him and to say just a few things that may be of interest at this time. We realize that the world is an angry and present reality in many ways. We see the path of the frightened prey and the stalking of the hunter. And by that we mean simply that we feel that feeling that the difficulties of the illusion may generate, part of that feeling being the feeling of victim. Part of the feeling, the guilty knowledge that one is the hunter as well as the hunted that one cannot be one without being the other. We realize that no matter how excellent in behavior and thought one attempts to be, one must face, and indeed it is painful in your density, the completeness of the self, the fact that one is a full circle, an infinite universe of personalities, possibilities, and choices. So with each of you, my friends, is a mixture of the good and the bad, as you would call it. This is the nature of your illusion. Yet if one is a disappointment to oneself, it is because one has not been good to oneself, but bad to oneself. Were we to ask you if the Creator forgives, yes, you would say, I believe so. If you ask your brother if he forgives you, he shall think and say, yes, I believe so. Yet the one who has not forgiven the self is caught upon the tender hook of harsh, self-inflicted guilt. Is this, my friends, a service to yourself, this guilt? Are you helping yourself to grow spiritually by speaking harsh words to yourself about past errors? My friends, as always, we encourage meditation and contemplation, and in this instance, encourage you to take into meditation the forgiveness of the self by the Creator, by those who have supposedly wronged, and by yourself, for you are but the grade school child adding the sums and getting an incorrect answer. Keep your erasure sharp and check those sums constantly. And when you find the error, use the eraser, but not the tongue in self castigation for that self same error. For you are here to encourage yourself to be the willing servant, 
to feel the freedom of the joy of service. You are here to help, and the first person you must help is yourself. That you may be free from self-inflicted woe and so single-hearted and able to turn gladly to service to others in compassion, in peace, and always with a light touch. We thank you for calling us to your meeting, and we would at this time leave you. We would close through this other instrument. If the instrument would be willing, I leave this instrument at this time in love and light. I am Hatan. Jim channeling, I am Hatan, and greet you again in love and light through this instrument. Before taking our leave of this group, we would wish to offer ourselves in the attempt to speak to any further queries which might remain upon the minds of those present. If there is a query, may we begin with that query now. Hatan, I'd like to thank you for being with me tonight. I've been thinking about starting to act as a vocal channel again, but I find that my reasonings to do so are not truly pure. I find that I had begun to have doubts lately as I've begun to introduce new people to this group. I find that I doubt my ability to adequately convey knowledge which I have received, and I'm afraid that I will misinform them and not truly be of service to them in their beginning of their seeking. I also find that I have feelings that I know I would once again like to channel, that the true reasoning behind it is a selfish one, in that I feel that I am going at it from the viewpoint that my status with new people would be elevated, and I know this is a selfishness on my part, so while I feel the urge to channel again, I have serious doubts. I know I still have the ability, I know that by speaking now I am channeling in a way. Would you speak to me, please? I am a ton, and am aware of your query, my brother. May we say that it is a great joy for us as well to blend our vibrations with yours this evening and together seek upon the path of the seeker of truth. Your desire to serve those who have recently joined this circle of seeking is commendable, for you have once again felt that call which originates from within your own heart to offer the self to others that which you have found helpful in your own journey might offer assistance to them as well the means by which you pursue the offering of assistance is of course that which is of your choice and we would offer our assistance to you in making this choice by commenting that the desire to serve without regard for return is at the heart of all successful service we would suggest that you must in order to be most effective in offering yourself, find the most appropriate means of so doing, that which has its foundation uncluttered with personal desires within your own heart. The attempt to be of service as a vocal instrument is one which requires, as you know, a great deal of personal discipline and willingness to put the self in the position that may seem quite foolish. This is the area in which you find your current doubts arising, and we might remind you that all instruments feel some degree of this foolishness or liability to foolishness. For in order to serve as an instrument, one must move aside those reasoning portions of the mind and allow the less frequently used subconscious mind to form a channel through which information might be moved and which might become perceived and transmitted by the conscious mind. This is a process which requires that one open the self to this inner conduit or channel in a fashion which does not leave one firm footing or grasp of the situation or shall we say, a control over it. Thus your doubting has fundamentally sound reason for its existence, and thus we do not find personal doubting to be a significant obstacle for any who would serve as a vocal instrument. As always, we would remind each instrument that the placing aside of the doubt each time that one begins is perhaps even a helpful and humbling experience that allows the channel to be opened in a manner which it contains little personality coloration, shall we say, as possible for the proper blend of vibrations to occur. However, the point to which we feel the greatest attention needs be given is that point that serves as the motivation for your taking up again the service of the vocal channel. And we cannot speak more specifically to this point, for we do not wish to take from you the opportunity to find your own way through this maze of desires, some of which seem upon the surface to conflict. We can only encourage you, my brother, that should you again wish to work as a vocal instrument, we are most happy to blend our vibrations with yours in this pursuit of service. Is there another query, my brother? This is the most comfortable I've been in a long time during meditation. I feel a definite kinship with you, and I'm very comfortable in your company. Thank you. I am Hatan, and we are most grateful to you as well, my brother. We, we rejoice in the opportunity of blending our vibrations with you, and we thank you. Is there another query at this time? Carla. One short one. 
and it's just asking for your opinion on a couple of things. You can either give it or just not. It depends on your concept of free will. First of all, was the purity of the channeling of the contact IRA satisfactorily pure in terms of my channeling? Or do I have work to do before I can channel that energy? I couldn't tell. I am Hatan, and I'm aware of your query, my sister, and now we see, my friends, that even the more experienced also have those needs to quell the doubt which arises from the effort which has been offered. And it is well that each instrument wishes to improve itself and to offer itself in the highest manner that it may stably do so. We commend each instrument for being careful and considerate enough in the vocal channeling efforts to constantly monitor those services which are offered to others. The contact of which you speak, my sister, was one which was, as you are well aware, quite unexpected, and thus is something of a mystery to you. The contact utilized your abilities in a fashion which has been quite efficient in producing the manifested form of concept communication which the entity was desirous of transmitting this evening due to the query which this group offered as the focus of the gathering. Thus we would commend your efforts both in the maintaining of the contact and its reception as well. We are happy that you have found that this contact is of some interest, for there are many of this kind of contact which want or lack the ability to find channels through which to speak. And this entity is quite happy that it has been able to make itself known to this group through your instrument. Is there another query, my sister? Carla, yes. Thank you for that answer. It was certainly unexpected, and it was certainly, I mean, I wasn't just getting the concept. I was getting the whole impressions, and it was really hard to keep up. Actually, it was, you had to, instead of being real careful and choosing just the right word or something it was like scrambling to keep up it was you know i couldn't use the analogy of baseball really i imagine that's the way inner planes channeling works and i was just doing some of it and that's probably why i was getting tired i don't exactly know how to do that that's why i asked if i needed more training perhaps at another time when we have more energy i can ask specifically you know what i might do better fit myself for such channeling as that if I deem it advisable for this research group. But the other question was, would working with this channel detune me for work with the Confederation? If I could know that, I would like to know that. I am Hetan, and we find that your work with this new contact is work which would blend well with the work you have accomplished and may yet accomplish with those who have joined together with the Confederation of Planets in the service of the Infinite Creator. The vibrational nature of a contact is the determining factor, not the status of belonging to the confederation of planets. Thus, the work with those of Ira is work well accomplished, my sister. Is there another query? Carla, you said those of Ira. I thought Ira was an individual. Was it a manner of speaking rather than I mean is your impression that is indeed a multi-personed personality or are you referring to each life that Ira has lived and that he's just manifesting one but he's all of them I don't understand I didn't mean to ask another question but you just caught me off guard there I am Hatan. we find that we have made an error in communicating through this instrument we do not wish to give the impression that the contact with Ira was a contact with more than one individual entity is there another query at this time Carla very well thank you many thanks I am Hatan, and we again give our great thanks to each present for allowing our blending of vibrations with yours this evening. We are pleased that we have been able to exercise this instrument's present, and have been able to join again this group which has for a great portion of your time been a home base for us. We shall take our leave of this group at this time, leaving each in the love and in the light of the one infinite creator. We are those of Hatan, Adonai, my friends, Adonai. Now I found in particular uh, this very interesting because only one other time I can remember in going through the thousands of channelings that are available with uh, uh, research did I see an ascended master come in somebody that actually knew Jesus want to give information about Jesus but this is not the first time there have been other entities that have done this and it's interesting it's almost like Hatan allowed this person who had personal knowledge give information about Jesus or Yeheshua as he was called back then. Oftentimes in the spiritual community, people just love the 144,000. They say that there's 144,000 that will awaken to change the earth. And maybe that's true, but the idea of the 144,000 
being that there's some elite spiritual group that are the ones that go to heaven. And there are people that really believe this. There are people that really believe that in the trillions of people in the history of the earth, only 144,000 will go to heaven. This is just not true and it doesn't feel right. And the way that the Bible is written symbolically, I don't think it's true. And Neville Goddard points out that it's not true. And here we have secondary evidence to conclude that the 144,000 is meant symbolically because rabbis would speak symbolically through numbers. But if you want to believe the 144,000, that's fine. I have close friends that are actually Jehovah Witnesses and I understand where they're coming from. It says that right there. But I do not believe that's what it says. I mean, wouldn't that be ridiculous? Only 144,000? Everybody that's ever lived on the earth and only 144,000? You know in your heart that's ridiculous. Perhaps there's a special group of people that are able to aid in our ascension into the fourth density, and perhaps that's what it is. There's a group of people that are able to help, and perhaps that group of 144,000 are just people who are further along on the path. I can, might be able to accept it. I've read lots of other interesting interpretations that it has something to do with DNA and other major conspiracies that the 144,000 have already left. And I am interested in all of it, but I find it all laughable because Christ is within all of us, not just 144,000 of us. I even had somebody in the Neville Goddard group on Reddit say, well, Neville was one of the 144,000 and that his experience of Christ within was just limited to the 144,000 and that the Elohim were just 144,000. I just don't believe that's true. Now, I want to hear your theories about it. Put it in the comments. I'm not going to judge you because there are millions of theories about it, but I'm just giving you my impressions and what I was able to find with LL Research. Now, I put this under the quo setting because Hatton's in it, but it's kind of not quo. It's definitely through Carla. And it's fascinating as a historical observer and researcher of these channelings. There are so many of these channelings. And they channeled a lot more than just quo. Entities would come through all the time. And in those particular channelings, I'm fascinated by the way that Carla handled it and by the way that she talked about it and by the way that she would discuss it afterwards. We can learn a lot from these in just channeling in general. There is an important discussion at the end of this particular channeling about channeling. What are your reasons for channeling? What are your purposes for channeling that is related to service in general? If you're wanting to serve others to prop up yourself for selfish reasons, then it's a different sort of service than offering service humbly without any help for yourself. And it goes along the lines with channeling. If you're aware of those thoughts, that tells you one thing. But it is a part of the process of service to understand what our motivations are behind it. Are you just wanting to be of service to get something out of it? Or is it just being offered naturally without any reason whatsoever, just a desire to be of service to others? We can see that in their example with channeling and in other efforts. And I have struggled with this too. I certainly will admit that some of the service I've given is not humble and unselfish. I've had selfish reasons for certain episodes I would put out because I thought it would get more views or whatever and that is always going to be the truth. And I'm able to sit and evaluate and sometimes I'm okay with it. And sometimes I have work to do and at least I'm aware of it. And I think everybody has to go through that process. I just loved the description of Jesus as the teacher, this person that taught many things that were not written about in the Bible. That while he might've been dirty, he humbled himself and never ever considered himself over anyone else and offered himself into service completely. And that's the example that I am moving towards and perhaps someday I can truly reach it. Join me on this path because I know there are many of you out there that want to walk this path as well. And all we can ever do is our best and be open and honest and truthful about where we're coming from and where we're going. You can find all episodes of The Reality Revolution at therealityrevolution.com. Be sure to check out the Quo playlist that has all the Quo channelings we've gone over so far, and there are so many cool ones that we've covered. I would love it if you checked out my art. You can find it 
at www.newearth.art. We have new art coming out every day, and it's all done from the heart in service to bring beauty and new energies into your life. And welcome to the Reality Revolution.